Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In the previous episode we discovered that Kerbalism is finally working because it killed Jeb and largely because we did not have supplemental uh, supplies, specifically oxygen, and so we should probably get this technology, the space exploration technology, so we can get more oxygen so that we can do our moon missions. Now, somebody had mentioned in the comments that this auto-location thing indicates that there's something missing. I don't know what's missing here to cause this auto-location message. And there's a few others here as well. I do have community resource pack in right now. So there's something else uh, I guess it's compatible with because uh, I think community resource pack is the only thing it actually required. But possibly other stuff that uh, is compatible with causes these messages, but we'll have to see. Uh, I will uh, toss in some more mods. So for reference, the only mod that you really need, you know, the only mods that you really need to uh, follow along with this are Kerbalism, Community Resource Pack, and probably Module Manager. But um, if you want the whole visual effects, I'm currently using the Spectrum Visual Compilation, which is a bunch of mods. But, you know, that's just if you want the visual effects and you know that includes scatter and a bunch of other things so yeah uh, so far it's pretty simple uh, along the way I'll add more things especially stuff that uh, Kerbalism ex is explicitly compatible with possibly Outer Planets mod eventually you know and uh, Planetary Base Inc I think somebody requested and Scansat probably but for now, we're going to keep it simple so that I come to grips with Kerbalism properly before adding more stuff in. Uh, anyway, it seems like the thing to do to get the additional science, we need about 60 more, uh, 16 more, is to send a probe to the moon. Uh, I think uh, we have a contract here that says return to Kerbin from orbit of the moon. It doesn't say that we need to um, send a Kerbal along, so we're going to do that with a probe. So, in honor of our recently departed Kerbonaut, who has reminded us that probably we should send probes first, I have named this Probe Jeb. And so, Jeb will be lost but not forgotten. And uh, so, very simple thing, we've got the Probodobodyne Octo, which is looking a lot spiffier these days. It's got a shiny top, you can't really see it there. But uh, they've definitely updated the graphics on that. Not so much for the solar panels and the batteries and this sort of thing, but We've got a heat shield here, I've put half the ablator. We've got two antennae, we've got the thermometer, we've got the Geiger, Geiger counter, and we've got the usual Terrier engine here, and we've got the Suval engine down there. And here we see the vacuum stats. If we go to sea level stats, it's radically different, but uh, vacuum stats give you a better sense, and so I think this is more than enough to get to the moon and back. Heck, we could probably swing by Minmus, Minmus too, but they haven't given us a contract for that. I thought about putting lander legs and doing it, but uh, let's just keep it simple this time, huh? All right, so we are just going to go and come back, fulfill the contract, get uh, 16 science is all we're looking for, and uh, hopefully this will do the trick. We'll see. So, probe Jeb 1. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and it's looking okay. It says it has communications. I hope two antennae will be good enough there. And launch. It's always confusing to me how, because I have to go back between remote tech in RP0 and realism overhaul and the stock comms here. I have to constantly remember how each system works. Obviously, we're using the solar panels as sort of a pretend <laughs> aerodynamic surface. I don't think that quite works out, but, you know, we made it an attempt. We don't have fairings yet. Right now, we also don't have the pods reaction wheel. We just have the reaction wheel in the octo. Okay, separation and ignition. Don't flip, don't flip, don't flip. Oh, it's gonna flip. <sighs> that happens. Ah, uh, it's got bad aerodynamics. Okay, this way, this way, this way. Yep. On we go. I think we have surplus delta V anyway. We'll be fine. It's just the bad aerodynamics of this caused a lot more drag, and so we completed that stage earlier than I thought we would. 
Well, time to apoapsis is increasing at this pitch up. That's not quite high enough. Okay, that will do. Got 2,000 meters per second left. That still should do the trick. Okay, 40 kilometer periapsis around the moon. Burn in 17 minutes. Electric charge is recharging. I don't know if we have to extend the antennae here, but I feel safer about extending the antennae. The moon is fairly big. It's tough to miss it. I must be missing something. What's this two floating here? I'm gonna try not to do too many probe missions, mainly because, again, the purpose of this is supposed to be to figure out Kerbalism, and you're not really doing that when you don't have a Kerbal. Just as a thing I should do. Oh, this doesn't have the um, low hibernation during time warp feature, huh? Well, we definitely have communication. That's good. Okay, well, at periapsis, we have a connection. We're not on the opposite side of the moon from Kerbin. And we might as well get into a low orbit. Uh, and it's most helpful to be low on the side that is facing Kerbin, so we get the science. Otherwise, we're not, well, I mean, yeah, otherwise we're not going to be able to communicate with the probe, so that's good. I think we've done science here. Let's see. No, actually, um, let's see if we can transmit it. No, it's recorded. Okay, so we've got antennae now. Mm. Data. Can we transmit that? Flag file for transmission. Okay, uh, it's, it's going now, I think. I think that's what's happening there. So we know that... Oh, there we go. It says uh, 91.2 science. Okay, so that, that got sent. Let's see about thermometer reading. Yeah, we haven't done that here. Or we did it with Jeb, but we didn't bring it back. So transmit. And it's transmitting now. Okay. So previously, of course, we didn't pack in Tenai. So this is the first time we were actually transmitting the science. Moon space low already, though. So really, I don't think we're going to have much to do over here. OK, 108 science now. Good. And I don't think there's anything more. I didn't pack goo or anything. I kept it simple, basically. I wanted to make sure to get done with the contract. Okay, well, we need to replenish electric charge. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be much to do over here, but we'll double check. Okay, but there's no new science to be done here. If we wanted to go to Minmus, let's just make a perspective plot for that. We're not in the best location here. It's going to take a while. Basically, it's going to take most of Minmus's orbit to get to where we're going to meet up with it. Actually, that's its ascending node. So that's we're basically basically going to have to wait until it gets there. We could do a correction over here, but still. We could wait around the moon until it's in a better location. Uh, there we go. Uh, that was a uh, hash of it. It's not the best possible combination of maneuvers, but 193 here and 100 over there will do the trick. So that's 300 meters per second. We could easily do it for less if we were patient and they plotted it out. So the question is whether I want to do that or not. It's going to take 18 days. It's not like we're on a schedule or anything. We don't have Kerbal construction time. Yeah, why not? All right, we'll do this combination. So we have to wait a day. I mean, we certainly have communication range, I think. All right, I have to disable the warning about it lacking probe control. Otherwise, we're never going to be able to time warp to any good degree. 
And then time warp was restricted at lower altitudes too. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna time warp at the tracking station. Will it take me a time warp every time when we lose control here? No. Good. Oh, nope. It does. Okay, difficulty options. These are genuine difficulty options. I think somebody mentioned how to... Oh, this is a notification. Um, signal lost is a notification. I mean, I'm gonna figure that out eventually anyway. Um, it'll show in the upper left-hand corner. Mm, we'll turn that one off for now because that's what's interfering and then maybe later on I'll turn off some of the other ones. We're underwater again. This is a scatterer effect. Sometimes it puts you underwater. No, oh, no. It still warned me when signal was lost. Huh. Well, so much for any hope that that setting actually did something. So I'll look at the comments. I, I, I thought somebody had mentioned something, so. I suppose we should check for a Minmus contract. Though it might say launch a new vessel or something. Burn 1 has us exiting the moon. And that's a pretty good Minmus periapsis if it's still true. All right, let's, tech, uh, let's check for a contract. Sometimes the music randomly pops up and I don't know why. Let me just quickly check that. The music volume is supposed to be 0%. And then sometimes we still hear the music. Like in the VAB, we've heard the building music every now and again. That's an odd bug. I mean, that's really odd, because when you set the music to 0%, you really don't expect to hear the music. Surface is a little bit more challenging. But yeah, they're not giving us anything to do with Minmus. Uh, we'll pick up the Surface of the Moon contract. And of course, Eventually, we're going to want to plant a flag on the moon, so might as well. It's going to give us 10 years. Sometime in the next 10 years, we'll have planted a flag on the moon. And Science Day from Space Around the Moon, I mean, why not? <laughs> I swear, uh, there's more and more water around here these days. Oh, we're, we're still in the moon's sphere influence. I guess um, we can do the Science Day from Space Around the Moon right now. There's nothing we haven't done before, but there's a good time to check whether null science still works. Let's see. Or does Kerbalism bust that? So there's, you know, null science. There's nothing actually being transmitted, but does it satisfy the contract? I believe it did. Well, we did explore the moon. Wait. Um... No, uh, I don't... Whatever. That's probably just a leftover message. Science Day from Space Around the Moon. Yep, we fulfilled that contract even though we didn't transmit any science, but that's fine. I prefer it that way. It's not that a temperature reading is useless just because you've done it before. It's like, I've taken the temperature outside. I never have to take the temperature outside again. Okay, Minmus periapsis of 97 kilometers. Let's just check right now how much it would take to get into orbit around Minmus. Like 60? Because we've already sort of boosted up to the moon level and then our flyby of Minmus seems to boost us up even more. So... Yeah, we're practically, you know, we're in an orbit very close to Mrs. Orbit already. Alright, but it takes us 13 days to get over there. Communication is excellent, by the way. Well, let's do high over Minmus right now. Log temperature. Transmit. And it is actually transmitting. And log radiation data. Transmit. Okay, so those should happen. There's Minmus. 
make sure that we have communication where we're doing our maneuver for orbit. It is, it is fine. That should be good enough for low over minimus, I think. The problem is on at that location we're not going to be in communication so maybe I should go lower in the hopes that once we recover communication we will be able to still get low over minimus. Really skimming it here. Minimus has some dangerous bulges every now and again but I think uh, 7.6 kilometers should cover it. Okay we've regained communication and let's see about the science. Yes, near Minmus, transmit. And the temperature, transmit. Those are going out. Hundreds of megabytes of temperature and radiation data somehow. And with that done, we should definitely bring this back because that's the contract we were trying to fulfill. I hope the fact that we ended up in orbit around, uh, yeah, in orbit around Minmus does not complicate the contract parameters. Okay, so, well, that's a pretty low curb in periapsis. Let's get it to about 24 ish. Eh, I'll fill around with it during the burn. So, of course, we want to go directly out in this direction. Mimesis inclination sometimes makes things complicated, but I don't think it's a big deal right now. Our awkward orbit is probably more of a problem. 182 meters per second, and we've got 531. So, things are looking good. There's the moon and Kerbin. Oh, yes, we need to check that we have communication. We will. Okay, Kerbin return burn. We no longer have a periapsis, that would probably be dangerous. There we go. 11 kilometers, 21, 26.9. I'll try a little bit lower than that. So I remember one comment where somebody was having trouble bringing stuff back without you know, losing a blader and everything. One of the keys is to make sure your apoapsis stays at the level of your current orbit, so Minmus orbit. And if you have the outbound trajectory skewed, in other words, not in this direction, but off to the side somewhere, what's going to happen is your apoapsis is going to be higher than the orbit. Sometimes that's necessary if you need to get back quickly. Uh, so your apoapsis will end up over here somewhere and you're already past apoapsis coming in. But the r risk on that is that it's going to be a hotter re-entry. This is the best you can get. You obviously can't have an apoapsis that's lower than your current orbit. So always important to make sure we are recharging and we are. Now, will 100 ablator be enough to return from Minmus? This is an interesting question. Another topic on re-entry is heat shield loading, the amount of mass you put on a certain surface area of heat shield. We don't have much of a heat shield loading here, compared to the cap seal, for instance. So it should be okay. Should be better than the situation with a capsule. Now we, oh, it's gonna be on the nighttime side. We don't have any thrust once we dump this module, but we'll still have a reaction wheel. Okay, well, separate, there we go. And yep, still at 24 kilometers. Oh, I should arm this parachute. Oh, it's only deploy. Uh, are we going to have communication where we sit down? It's tough to say. I wish there was an explicit arm the parachute. Hmm. 
Well, we're in plasma blackout now. Okay, that communitron was broken by arrow forces. Pretty quickly. There's some overheating here. Ablator is being lost. Okay, we have some communication. That's good. Nye Island. Good name. But it's a stretch, the communication line. I don't know, if I click deploy, will it arm it? Uh, when, no, when safe, deploy. Okay, so it's armed, right, good. Again, complications because I'm used to real shoots. And back in the day, you know, the parachutes will attempt to deploy no matter what. It wasn't just like when safe or anything, that option wasn't there, so. I have bad memories and it makes me a little bit skittish. Okay, we have safe parachute deployment. Okay, full deployment brings us to... Mm, it's still ticking down. 3.6 meters per second. We, we will monitor the completion of the contract. Well, it looks like the next thing we need to do is plant a flag on the sur surface of the moon, doesn't it? But right now we're limited to 30 parts. I think it would probably be prudent for us to upgrade the VAB so we can use a few more parts. Huh? Okay, we got a bunch of world firsts for Minmus. We have splashed down. It did check off the contract, so we have completed that contract completely now. And recover vessel. All right, for t uh, 14 extra science earned, some parts recovered, no crew, of course. And yeah, let's get the science we were looking for, space exploration. So now we will be able to get these supplemental oxygen tanks, which I'll just unlock right now, and supply containers, which I'll unlock right now. Okay, so hopefully that will help us in our moon landing mission. But I think we should also upgrade this. That's 225,000 funds. And we can easily handle that. Mainly, I mean, we did pick up these two contracts, which were reasonably lucrative. Explore the moon again. Land on the moon. Walk on the surface of the moon. Well, obviously. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think we're pretty clear about what we're going to be trying to do next. Okay, well I have a bit of an unpleasant problem. I can't find the tanks I just unlocked. The supply tank and that uh, pressurized tank. So let's go through. These are the pods. Yes, we recognize them. These are the standard tanks. We recognize them too. The parts should be unlocked already. These are the engines. Yes, no big complication. Nothing in this category, no, nothing in that, and payload, service bay, I thought maybe it was like an option on the service bay, it's, it's not, you know, maybe it changes into one of those tanks. Aerodynamics, no, ground, no, thermal, we got a bunch of radiators, two heat shields, but no dice, um, electrics, no, communication, no, science, no. And utility. You would think it was in utility, right? Well, we got the chemical plant, which is part of that technology. The light support system, illuminator, illuminator, parachutes, but not those parts. This is manifestly different than those parts. Uh, configure pod is interesting these days. We've got the scrubber here, pressure control, and um, pressurization says good right now, that's nice. Humidity, none. Uh, scrubbing is good. I mean, I would like all the things. Use nitrogen to maintain the internal atmosphere. Uh, well, I mean, and we have nitrogen, so that makes sense, good. We've got the possibility of shielding, though I still don't have uh, 
good idea of how that's measured out. Um, anyway, we want scrubbing here. Oh, and there's a water recycler here too. Filter out impurities of wastewater. And then there's a wastewater thing. They, they, they don't show up unless they're, they've got some sort of configuration for them. So wastewater won't show up if there's no water recycler. Okay, well it's a pretty interesting problem because we know that the game is loading the part because the part appears in the tech tree and yet it's not in the VAB and it turns out the reason is because category has been set to none here, presumably because it's supposed to be in a custom category. I don't know if uh, Kerbalism requires a uh, custom category kit or whatever it was, community category kit, something like that. Um, there is a mod like that that allows for special specific categories. But with this set to none, it's not going to appear in the VAB at all, as far as I can tell. So, I'm just going to go through all the Kerbalism files, and whatever it says none, I'm just going to uh, turn it to utility, uh, so that it does show up and then restart the game. So that'll be my little fix for now, until we figure out something better. But I don't really need it in a separate category. I sh I'm used to having way more parts than this anyway, so I'll figure it out. Okay, problem solved, I think, and this sort of answers one of the previous questions I had with the fuel cell, right? I mean, we had to get hydrogen and oxygen to run the fuel cell, but I didn't see how we got that. Turns out we were supposed to get this small pressurized tank earlier, I think, because it's this pressurized tank that we just unlocked. So this was supposed to come out earlier, but uh, we didn't see it because it wasn't appearing in the VAB because its category got set to none. Now, I don't know if the hiding of these were delib was deliberate, but there are better ways of hiding it than showing in a tech tree and not showing it in the VAB. Mm. I'm gonna assume that these were not meant to be hidden, and we can use them, and so let's proceed with designing our lunar lander, lunar lander mission. Okay, sort of an interesting thing. I decided to put a carbon dioxide tank over here. We've got the oxygen tank over here, but it turns out that much oxygen uh, is good enough for 32 days, so I don't think we need two of them. I mean, you never know, but still, I decided to put an empty carbon dioxide container here. And the reason for that was I wanted to change the scrubber here to a water recycler to see if that was possible. And of course, uh, the water container is different than these little guys. These pressurized tanks don't take water. They take, um, let me go through them. Um, Oh, and you have to click here, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia, and then carbon dioxide. Now here it says 312 storage, then when I take that out, it says storage none. Now does the Kerbal generate carbon dioxide or does this number actually go down? I don't know, it says duration perpetual, I mean, I, I don't quite understand that. When it's empty it should have a storage capacity and that storage capacity should last for a while because the Kerbal is generating carbon dioxide. But here, if I put just a little bit of carbon dioxide in, it says duration perpetual. I don't really understand that. So what I'm gonna do is put it halfway maybe. And we'll... I think... Uh, we'll keep a scrubber for now instead of the water recycler. So scrubber. But we'll turn the scrubber off to see what happens, maybe. Let's see, I mean, here it says electric charge. It seems to be consuming electric charge, that's why it's in orange. And waste atmosphere in orange. And then producing carbon dioxide, which is why that's in green. And pressure control the same way it consumes electric, tr electric charge and nitrogen and produces atmosphere. Well, uh, we'll do that test and see what happens, but right now we only have uh, five days of water and five days of food. So let me see about the other containers. This supply container, how heavy is that? These little guys aren't too heavy. This is pretty big, but there is this other supply container here. This one's smaller and fits right up there too. Not much of a texture, gotta say. Um, this one has a nice, te well, it has a texture. This one doesn't seem to have much going on for it. Okay, well that takes our food wa food and water, but that's 150 days. How much heavier does that make us? Let's see. Mm, 
2.035 tons. So that's not much at all. And certainly uh, for realism overhaul that's gonna have to be changed because we humans actually take up more food, water, and oxygen than that. Uh, 150 days of food takes up a lot of space. So I can even undersupply here and that takes even less mass here. 27 days of water, 34 days of food. I don't want more food than water. I think that'll be fun. Well, I mean, I can't really do any better than that, so we'll leave it be there and we'll have that container. Seems pretty good on the life support, except uh, before re-entry we're going to be dumping this oxygen can, so we'll have to make sure to fill the pod up properly. I've put 0.8 shielding, though I still don't have any idea about how much shielding we really need. Um, radiation here. No, oh, okay, let, hold on. That, that hover information is much more interesting. Storm, two days. So if it's a worst case scenario, seems like we can last two days through that. One day in the inner radiation belt. If we pump this up, eight days in the inner radiation belt. Well, we're not going to spend eight days there. With a little bit of shielding, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Zero shielding, it's five hours, and half of the shielding, it's only a day and three hours, so not, not a big difference. It only really makes a difference when you pump it up, and if you go max shielding, it does eight days, so that's a big, big difference on the inner belt. And checking out the mass difference, it's pretty big difference. It's like nearly 0.5 tons. The delta V goes down by quite a bit. So you can see, uh, let's make sure that that's on vacuum. Uh, with no shielding, 2,942. And with full shielding, 2,567. So, well, until it kills somebody. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I still don't know how we figure out whether a Kerbal is reaching their career limit on radiation or not. So, the one practical way to figure that out is if a Kerbal dies. I don't know. Unless they're gonna give me a number and that's the best I can do. Okay, so this seems like a reasonable lander. And I'll just continue building the rocket and we'll get on with it. Okay, it may be that I've gone too far here, so we're gonna risk Clowman Kerman, the Kerbal we, we rescued, rather than Valentina. We have a 70 ton rocket, lots and lots of these tanks, which are the only 8.7, uh, 1.875 meter tanks that we have. And we've got these Thumper solid rocket boosters, four of the swivels on the outside. I've unlocked finally the Reliant, and we're using one of those on the inside which we will shut down and then of course the terrier up here followed by another terrier here for the landing and the return. Um, rescuing the Kerbal that we sent over there in time will probably be difficult. Um, we have 34 days of food, 27 days of uh, water and 32 days of oxygen. So maybe, maybe uh, we could launch a rescue or maybe not. We will see. But the way I did this was, of course, clipping in these uh, FLT-100 fuel tanks, which are probably the best parts that we can use for radial attachments like this right now, like I did up here. But unlike up there, I decided to underfuel the tanks to give some sort of verisimilitude because we're clipping them in. And of course, we've got the nose cones. Yeah, this looks like fun. So let's try and launch it. Uh, you know what? Uh, can we auto strut things yet? I would really like to auto strut this. <laughs> uh, we do not have auto strutting yet though. Okay, SAS on. I don't have antennae on here. We're expecting to bring back Cloudman Kerman. Uh, well, it doesn't look wiggly on the launch pad right now. That's a good sign, right? We've got a thrust weight ratio of 2 at the beginning, I believe. It's showing the sea level stats right now. Okay, 1.71 it says. Alright, here we go. 
And launch. Okay, the boosters are a bit tight. Very close to the core. Let's see if they can separate cleanly. They do. I mean, especially with these engines sort of sticking out. Oh, no, 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 it's got... Uh, okay, hold on. Oh, why did the center engine not light? Mm, nope. And, yeah, that's the center engine. Well, no wonders. No wonders. Okay, no, 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 come back here, come back here. Come back here, rocket. I need an extra reaction wheel on this. Or fins. But, you know, at this point I feel like we should be getting away from fins. Oh, there's spaghettiness. There's spaghettiness. Uh... That should be good enough. Okay, wow. Alright, let's see. Yep. I didn't even have to look at map view. Moon is there. No, that'll take too long. I think uh, we'll need to get into orbit first. Okay. We, I mean, we don't actually need the center engine anymore. Uh, maybe we should have just not had the center engine in the first place. Seemed like we got off the ground vigorously enough. No wonder we didn't have the thrust weight ratio of 2 that I was expecting. Could have packed more electric charge. Where is the sun? Up there. This solar panel is getting stuff. But... With SAS on, it's not good. Okay, let's... Begin a judicious burn for orbit. By judicious, I mean throttling down so it doesn't go crazy. <laughs> quite, quite a lot of spring action in there. All right, separation. And a little bit of a burn first, but let's see our situation. Okay, that will be good enough. We are in an orbit 100 by 78. Okay, I see what that 1 and 3 are on that. That's the stage that's responsible for the burn. Interesting. So it's saying that that much of the burn will be done by this stage, and then that much by that stage, terrier stage. Well, the next terrier stage. Okay, separation and ignition. I'm not gonna do a free return trajectory or anything like that. <laughs> I've got an interesting approach though where it's gonna hit the moon again and then on the second pass around the moon that's gonna fling me out to Minmus and then out into interplanetary space. So probably want to just capture around the moon in the first place. Okay, double check that our solar panel is going to be facing the sun. Well, I wanted to do the carbon dioxide check. So, I'm going to turn the scrubber off. Well, it stopped doing anything with carbon dioxide here. See, when the scrubber is on, it appears to be generating carbon dioxide because that's negative. If it's positive, then it's consuming. Z oh, oh, here's the radi- oh, whoops. Here it has a radiation reading, 0%. And CO2 poisoning, 0%. Okay, I wish I could uh, keep that up somehow. That's sort of important information. So we've turned the scrubber off. I'll keep hovering over it. Uh, over that. Let's see. No radiation 1% now. Remember, we don't have any shielding. It looks like we got 2% on that fly through of the belts, but it doesn't look like that's going to be going away, so perhaps that's career. But I'm not sure. 
It's even got this as orange right there. Carbon dioxide, it says perpetual. So it seems to be okay, even though I've turned the scrubber off. Not sure what I think about that. I'm wondering whether it's going to suddenly pop up on me that bad things are going to happen. I didn't really put a lander, uh, sorry, a ladder on here. I hope the EVA pack is good enough to get back into the pod. Whoops. We, I don't think we even unlocked ladders, to be honest. So, not entirely my fault, right? Clawman Kerman's head feels light. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, we've got. 34% CO2 poisoning. Okay, all right. Um, so let's turn on the scrubber again. Running. Uh, we'll see how long that takes to help. 1% stress. 35% CO2 poisoning. Come on, scrubber. See, I, I don't understand how the CO2 thing works with this. Uh, CO2 wasn't being added to this tank or subtracted. Right now it's being added to it while the scrubber, scrubber is running. So, okay, that, okay, that does make sense because scrubbers do sequester CO2 sort of. Okay, where did it go before? <laughs> um, and why does this tank start full? It should start at empty, right? In the VAB. CO2 level 2.06%. Is it falling? It doesn't seem to be. I guess the scrubber can only bring it, uh, keep it steady. It can't actually diminish it. Which means the CO2 poisoning is only going to get worse. Is that what's going to happen? How are we going to solve this problem then? Scrubber is running. We have power. It's not that the scrubber is not working because we don't have power. But apparently the scrubber can't remove the CO2 past... I mean, just keeping it level. And the CO2 poisoning is just going to steadily get worse. This is a bit of a problem. What if we have Clawman EVA? Oh, in the EVA suit, the CO2 level is even worse, but it's going down. 8.7. I saw it go down 0.01%, but that's not going to be okay. The rate it's going down is sort of too slow to relieve the CO2 poisoning, I think. Non-regen scrubber running. But at least this scrubber works. Well, we're going to have to make orbit first, so... I can't just leave Cloudland out here. Oh, the CO2 poisoning is going up faster because it's a larger percentage. Um, CO2 level marginally lower now, but... Now it's because of the scrubber in the suit? Not sure. By marginal, I really mean 0.01%. Common Kerman seems unable to breathe properly. Yeah, apparently. I think Common Kerman was the result of a ill-conceived experiment on my part. Um, I mean, in the good old days, we would be able to do an emergency purge of the cabin air to clear out the CO2 and then restore it with the high oxygen that we have in this tank. Not that tank, this tank. But that does not seem to be an option. I don't really like the 0% breathing, that's 
Also not a good sign. Klaman Kerman died of CO2 poisoning. Uh, well, I think we have failed. I'm a little bit frustrated that we couldn't just clear the CO2 up. Actually, some of it actually got in here, but just not fast enough. We had 2% CO2 and the scrubber just couldn't get even 0.01% out. The suits scrubber could, but it was too slow. Well, I'm just killing Kerbals left and right now, aren't I? I guess we're gonna have to rescue another one to start off the next episode, because I don't want Valentina to meet the same fate here. And there's clearly a lot that I need to learn. But, here we are. We've lost the Kerbal to CO2 poisoning. And with this horrible, horrible situation, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, please do press like anyway. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.